Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to start my series on uh, beginning gardening and uh, uh, I'm going to go over several things in several different videos. But today's video is about location of the garden. And uh, probably if I have enough time, depending on the length of the video, I'll go over the different types of gardens that I know of. And did you hear that? I just heard that rooster crow. So it's definitely a rooster. So I'm down here, they're right behind the camera. But anyway, uh, so I'm gonna talk about location in the garden. There's several different factors you need to consider. And I'm gonna go over all those that I think is important. I'm uh, gonna we'll start with uh, one that's really not the most important one, but it's, it's kind of keys off everything else. And uh, that's accessibility. So like uh, our kitchen garden is, and that's what we'll be basing all this off of, our little garden up here next to the house. But it's right off the back of the house. It's right off the back of the kitchen. So you just take a few steps out and you're there. And uh, why is this important? Well, if you work like we do and uh, uh, you're in your kitchen and you look out and you see your garden, uh, you can tell if it needs watering, uh, you can tell if it needs harvesting. <laughs> Uh, you can look out there and see uh, peppers ripening and you say, well, I need to get some stuff and have stuffed peppers this week. Or you see tomatoes, we can have ham and, ham and cheese sandwiches with fresh tomatoes on them and stuff like that. So it's going to help your planning of your uh, meals, really. But the most important thing is you can keep an eye on it. If it needs water, you can look at it and say, I need needs water. I need to harvest. I got a pest problem. I need to go out and tend it. So like... I'm down here at my market garden. If I put our kitchen garden down here in this back corner of my property, which is, you know, uh, 900 and something feet from my house, you know, a thousand, thousand feet from my house, I'm going to forget about it. I'm not going to check on it and it's going to not do as good. So if it's next to the house and you've got good accessibility to it, you're going to keep an eye on it. It's going to stay in your mind and uh, you're gonna have a better results. So I said, I'm gonna put that as number one, accessibility. Number two, which is really the most important thing is sunlight. Uh, where you put it at, you gotta have eight to 10 hours of sunlight uh, for the maximum production. Now you can get away on some vegetables with you know a little less than that, but if you're going tomatoes, peppers, uh, most of your summertime stuff, you're gonna to have to have eight, eight to 10 hours of good sun sign. Good sun you got to have eight to 10 hours of good sunshine. So right now it's what, January 3rd, and uh, it would be hard now, unless you really know your property, like uh, I've lived here for uh, you know 30 years or whatever, so I kind of know my property really good. So make sure that, you know, there's no leaves on the trees at all. So make sure that you take that in consideration because you need to start planning now where you're gonna put that garden. So. So that's a really important thing to consider is the time of year when you're looking at it because uh, when summer and all these leaves, trees get leaves, it's going to put shadows on it and the angle of your sun. Like right now, uh, you know, it's January 3rd, so my sun angle is pretty low this time of day. So, and the summer is higher, so I get a lot more, you know, sunlight at my kitchen garden. So keep that in mind. So you need eight to 10 hours of sunlight. That's the second most important thing. Third thing is your soil type and uh, your drainage. So uh, you want to, uh, you don't want to put that thing in a V or in a swell where it comes a big rain and your garden standing in water. Uh, you don't want that. So uh, uh, I'm gonna say number three is drainage. So uh, you want I, identically, you want just a slight slope to it where that water will hit and kind of run off a little bit. You know, it's soaked down into the, the ground and the water your plants, but you don't want it staying there forever because it'll get down in and rot your roots. So if you're growing in water, I mean, unless you're growing rice or something like that, uh, your vegetables don't want staying in water all the time. So keep that in mind. You want just a, just a slight slope. Uh, and it don't matter where, but just as long as it's got a little bit of good drainage to it. So keep that in mind, you want good drainage to your garden. And uh, so uh, number four is kind of goes back to accessibility. You want to be close to a water source. That way when you get those dry spells, and uh, we've had, the last two years we've had really dry springs and it's kind of hurt our garden. 
So you need that water source, and that's one good thing about putting it up next to your house. Uh, you have a good source of water where you can water that every now and then. So, you know, once or twice a week, once they get started, they don't need as much water, but you got to still water them. And once they uh, germinate, you know, you got to keep them in water pretty good. And then, uh, you know, once they get so tall, you can cut back on watering. But if it's dry for weeks and weeks and weeks, you're going to have to water just, you know, till, you, till it rains. So keep that in mind. You need access to water. And uh, if you have it next to your house, that's one good thing. Go back to the accessibility. Also, your uh, like uh, where our kitchen garden is, it used to have a trampoline. So you need to keep that in mind too. You know, the traffic flow. Uh, like if your kids are running through there, they'll trample through your garden. So, you know, it's a good idea. Maybe if it's if you got little kids, like uh, we used to take our like old playhouse and put up there behind the garden when we had the big house and they would play in there while we was working in the garden so if you had your play area kind of off to the side of your garden and your kids are there and that way they can play while you're working in the garden or you know you can keep an eye on them or whatever so keep all this in mind you know accessibility uh drainage um sun and uh you know if you got good soil uh you need to kind of know where that is like i i think when my when we put ours out, it used to be an old barn, so I've got like, you know, deep, this deep of, uh, let me back up. My topsoil is that deep up in there, maybe even a little deeper, it's like, and rich, so uh, uh, that's one of the reasons we put it up there. I didn't hardly fertilize it all last year, and I had a real good result, so keep that in mind, and that kind of goes into the top, the three types that I want to talk about a garden, like uh, you can just put one in the ground, uh, you can do a raised bed, and raised bed, I mean, you can put boards around, you can uh, put concrete blocks, uh, uh, you can buy those decorative blocks and put around, or you can buy like a kit, and I think we're thinking about buying a metal kit to, uh, you put it together, and it's kind of an oval, and uh, you can use that, so uh, I think we're probably going to go, when I get the greenhouse finished, maybe not this year, but next year I'm going to do quite a few raised beds around it uh so but i think about maybe trying one buying one and trying it this year so uh this and, and trying it so uh raised bed if you got really bad soil or if it's really really hard a hard hard clay uh you can either amend that soil by you know you, you can till it and throw some amendments in there like compost or you can you know, broad fork it or shovel it or pick it, you know, with a pick. You know, somehow you're going to turn that soil. If it's real, real hard, you, you know, it's going to be really difficult unless you have some equipment. So uh, that's why you would need a raised bed. And uh, the third type is a container. Like uh, I talked to uh, people in Chicago and they like, live in a high rise and they've got like a patio or a balcony, I guess you would call it. And they had several containers that they grow tomatoes in. So uh, that's the third type. So you got in the ground garden, you got a raised bed garden, and you got container type gardens. And I, I think it's like, occasionally I watch there's somebody on YouTube and they have a high tunnel like I've got and they grow everything in the container in the high tunnel. Now, uh, I don't want to do that because I've got really good soil in my high tunnel and that's a whole different story, but we're not going there. But that's some options for you. So, but even if you do the container or the uh, uh, raised bed gardening, you still have to do everything I've said before on consideration on accessibility, sunlight, drainage, uh, uh, and a water source, all that still applies. So no matter what type of garden you choose, you need to keep all that in mind. So you need to start planning now and uh, uh, you know, your location. So I uh, hope this was a help. Uh, I think next series will be uh, plant selections and that's kind of important. I've learned some of the stuff the hard ways. On uh, Even last year I made a mistake and uh, we'll go over that in the next video. So uh, uh, we're, we will be live this Monday, January the 8th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you have any questions, you can go in there and uh, do a chat and uh, we'll answer any questions. And you can send me an email or you can comment down below. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to help. 
So I hope this was a help. Uh, just remember the the location. The most important thing is accessibility to me. To accessibility, the uh, uh, sunlight you got to have that, and then a water source. Uh, you can fix drainage if you have to. If you got a swell, you can build that up with some soil and fix that drainage. So. Uh, just keep all that in mind. Hope this was a help, and uh, we'll get planning on our seed selection and plant selection in the next video. And uh, I'll probably go in depth on the on uh, prepping the uh, in ground. And if we decide to get one this year, we'll do a raised bed garden. We'll do some details on that too in the later videos. So anyway, I hope you liked it. Give me the thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Have a question. I answer all comments, emails, and go on the live this Monday night. We do a live Monday night. Every Monday night, we do a live at 8 o'clock. So you can come to that and ask questions. So hope you liked the video. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Support your local farmer. And we'll see you on the farm in the next video.